Dear students, continuing from the previous module about algorithm discovery, now today we are going to start with another example that algorithm discovery, how it can be performed and what would be the process. So in fact, there are many strategies available in the literature to discover the algorithm, which we, we will be learning in the next modules. However, the underlying point of all of the strategies is that you get your foot in the door, which means that whenever you have a problem, you try to get first clue that how this problem can be solved. And meanwhile, you are understanding the problem in more depth and trying to solve it and ruling out the options and then focusing to the very specific solution of that problem. So let's have a practical example. So for example, there are four people who are going to start the race. And all of the people have predicted some statements. For example, the person A has predicted that person B would win. Person B has predicted that D would be lost. C predicted that A would be third and D predicted that A's prediction would be correct. As soon as they finished their race, the following were the findings. Only one of these predictions was true. And this was the prediction made by the winner. So this is all of the data. This is all of the problem we have. And we need to identify the order did A, B, C, D finish the race. So you need to find out the order that who remain first, then second, then third, and then fourth. So this is the problem. So here you are not going to understand whole problem at once. You are trying to put your foot in the door. So if you look carefully, the first statement and the last statement that A predicted that B would be win and D predicted that A's prediction would be correct. So as this problem is saying that only one of the statement could be true, this means we can reject first and the last statement because they mean the same thing. So we are left with two statements. B predicted that D would be the last and C predicted that A would be the last. So here you can see that if A predicted that B would win, this statement is false because of our first logic. This means that the second statement, B predicted that D would be lost, cannot be true as well because the statement made by the winner is the actually the true statement. So as A predicted that B would win, so this statement is wrong. This means that B will not be winner and any winner who is making the statement or the prediction would be actually the right one. So this means we can further rule out or reject the second statement that B predicted that D would be the last. So after all of this analysis, we are left with only one statement that is C predicted that A would be third. So and we also know that C is the winner because the prediction made by the winner is actually the correct one as stated by the question. So this means now we have two possibilities. The position of C and A is the correct one which we already know that C is the winner and A is at the third position. But either B is at second position and D is at last position or D is at second position or B is at last position, so we need to make the choice. So here you can also again uh, need to refer to the problem that says B predicted that D would be lost, the second statement. So as this is wrong statement, this was false statement, this was rejected previously, this means the first option can be ruled out that D is the last one. So this means the correct order would be C, D, A, B. So the C remained first, then D remained second, A remained third, and B remained the last in the race. 
So what it requires, actually, you have tried to solve the problem. So it is not by following one methodology. It was basically your critical thinking and your thoughts that you organized. And one important point was that whenever you have put foot into the door, then you were trying to find more clues and trying to ruling out the other options to be very specific to reach to the particular conclusion. And meanwhile, you were referring to the problem as well. So sometime it happens that you cannot build an algorithm by only understanding the problem before starting the algorithm, algorithm discovery. So sometime you need to reconsider or re-refer to the problem and then you are able to actually come up with the solution and to algorithm to the discovery of the algorithm. So if we conclude today's module, we have learned a very basic phenomena that is the core of all of the strategies being developed for algorithm discovery and that is basically get your foot in the door. And we have learned it with an example and we have seen that how our first clue and the following clues helped us to solve the problem and to discover the algorithm.